What's hotter, giving a TED talk or blowing a balloon on the TED stage? Six liters. That's the maximum volume of air an average lung is capable of holding. If a scuba diver takes a full breath at a depth of 20 meters and returns to the surface quickly, the six liters of air expands three times the capacity of our lungs to 18 liters. Not surprisingly, this causes our lungs to explode like an overfilled balloon. This is the same condition that almost took the life of my friend Evelyn in a scuba diving accident. Today, I'd like to share how her accident and many other accidents in the adventure industry could have been prevented by an implementation of a blockchain. When we hear about the blockchain, things that come to mind are stories about Bitcoin or cryptocurrency millionaires. Some of you may even recall the dark web stories we've heard about people buying drugs or even hiring hitmen using an anonymous cryptocurrency. But is there something more? Is there something that we are missing? I have some ideas, but in order for me to share them properly, I have to tell you about my friend's near-death accident to give you some context. Evelyn was out on a seven-day liveaboard trip scuba diving in the Maldives. Just on her second dive there, she got caught in a strong down current, and it started to push her towards depths of over 40 meters. While being swept, sweeping away from her group, she tried to get the attention of her dive buddies using the scuba diving distress signal by waving her arms over her head like this. Luckily, her dive buddy saw her and responded quickly by waving hello back to her. In their inexperience, they thought she was saying hi. Unable to escape the down current, she conducted an emergency ascent using a BCI device, a device that's designed to help you come back to the surface safely. However, it has quickly turned into an uncontrolled ascent, and she started going towards the surface rapidly. Remember that balloon? When Evelyn surfaced, she was coughing up blood. Just the fact that she survived this incident is a miracle in itself. As you can imagine, this raised quite a few questions in our mind. We wondered, how can so many things go wrong in a sport that focuses so much on safety? To give you some perspective, Scuba diving's pre-dive safety checklist resembles that of a small aircraft's pre-flight checks. There are dozens of organizations that make safety rules for scuba diving. Some of the famous ones include PADI, SDI, NAWI, and SSI. Even for recreational diving, you have to take a three to four day course and get certified by one of these organizations. They even make rules related to how much experience a diver should have before going diving in a certain region. For example, to go diving in the Maldives, they recommend that you should have already completed 30 to 40 dives. But there's a problem here. An arbitrary number of dives doesn't give us any useful information about a diver's ability. A diver's experience varies greatly depending on multiple factors, including dive location, the strength of the current, depth, and much more. Now we know that scuba divers are required to document this information in their dive logbooks after every dive. So why are scuba diving agencies making what I call cop-out rules, like the requirement of 30 to 40 dives to go diving in the Maldives. It's because they don't have access to the divers' experience data. The industry still relies on paper logbooks. But within these paper dive logbooks lies an enormous amount of very valuable data, information that can be used to make better rules and gain visibility over the state of the industry. Some organizations have tried 
to digitize this process by creating an online logging system. But with multiple organizations creating their own rules, the way this process is implemented varies greatly, thus rendering it useless. The current process also has some other critical problems. As a diver, you can literally write in as many dives as you want in your dive logbook and legitimize them using some creative stamping skills. Thank you, Staples. That was easy. <laughs> if you're an experienced diver, you would have to carry around multiple dive logbooks just to show your experience history, since a typical logbook only has room for you to log 30 dives. And when we look at the local providers, we notice another issue that was being overlooked. You cannot expect a small business owner who operates a marginal business in the middle of the Maldives to go through dive logbooks of customers and verify if they have enough experience diving in strong currents. It's clear that these paper dive logbooks are generally impossible to verify, very easy to tamper with, and are a burden for the industry. Since the process of verifying a scuba diver's experience is so ineffective and cumbersome, most providers resort to their own methods. What's worse is that there's virtually no mechanism in place for scuba diving agencies to keep track of how these modified procedures are impacting the safety of divers. All these discoveries made it clear that the lack of a common standard and a shared system for verifying divers' experience is the culprit that, in our opinion, contributes to so many scuba diving accidents and fatalities. Scuba diving agencies are working hard to make diving safer, but with their siloed systems, no real-time feedback loops, and non-existent data analytics, they're making rules in many cases with both eyes closed and hands tied behind their backs. This is the first time I realized that an impl implementation of a blockchain for the industry could help all scuba diving agencies, local providers, and divers. The blockchain would be able to provide a uniform, tamper-resistant dive log system for divers, regardless of the agency they belong to. An automated experience verification system for local providers to verify if their customer is equipped to go on this dive trip, and better data analytics for scuba diving agencies. We can essentially upload a digital resume of a diver onto the blockchain, which can include a more accurate depiction of a diver's experience, a system that local providers can use for experience verification and scuba diving agencies can use for data analytics. This kind of an implementation would enable better and safer rules for the industry and would have prevented Evelyn's accident from happening by notifying her of the experience requirements set by the industry as a whole. Self-interest keeps even well-meaning organizations from working together and sharing data. Blockchain can serve as the unbiased shared data solution enabling even competing organizations to collaborate and work together for the greater good. We are using the blockchain to make the adventure industry safer at Recreate. I encourage you to explore blockchain as a solution for industries where collaboration with other organizations would benefit the industry as a whole and the community it serves. Think about identity education, finance, and even healthcare. There is no reason why we need to enter our personal data into every website to create an account. An identity blockchain would make it possible for us to own our own identity while gaining more transparency as to who is accessing our personal information. In healthcare, to this day, our dental records are either emailed or physically mailed from one office to another here in the US. This should not be happening in 2017. Imagine a healthcare blockchain that medical offices can access to update 
and add to our records. I envision blockchain as a means to greater transparency, better collaboration, and more control in the hands of the communities we serve. Start by demystifying blockchain. Learn more about the various uses of this amazing technology. I've put together a list of articles, videos, and even links to communities you can join to help you on this journey. You can grab them at this link. Demand more transparency in services you use every day. Think about how much of our life is not made visible to us. From our financial data, to our health records, and more. Share what you learn and start saving lives with blockchain. Thank you.